Hi everybody, this is Mr. Holsey and uh, Project Lead the Way IED, Intro to Engineering Design course at Lake Jarvis High School. This is lesson 36. We're starting activity 4.3, motion in one direction, which is the intro to physics. Basically, the first lesson that you get in an AP physics course or any physics course really, you start by learning about motion. And motion um, and, and classical physics can be divided into two categories kinematics and dynamics kinematics is just tracing uh, the motion of certain objects so uh, speed direction velocity um, you can track where it is how it's moving at a certain uh, time or uh, in a certain path and then dynamics is what causes those movements so kinematics we're doing kinematics today and dynamics probably later uh, we're only dealing with motion in one direction. Of course, you can do it in uh, two directions or even three or sometimes even four um, if you're crazy. But we're doing it only in one direction. So pretty basic uh, today's class. So this is the first class that we are actually flipping. This is my first lecture that I'm ever uh, flipping. So typically in traditional education, what you get is a sage on the stage and I bestow my wisdom upon you students. Um, but today we're flipping it um, to where now instead of me being a sage on the stage in the classroom and you listening to me for 80 minutes, I'm the guide on the side. Um, and then I will be helping you with the homework in class. And you will be watching this video at home. Uh, so instead of learning the material in school and doing the, doing the skills, practicing the skills at home, you um, learn the material at home and then come to school and practice the skills with me so I can help you. You can use my resource better. Uh, I can just lecture um, through this video, which is hopefully, if this works out, this might be um, the direction we move for towards in this class. So you've got to watch this video and uh, answer the questions before um, your class on Wednesday the 5th or Thursday the 6th. So um, obviously you can't come in um, right now and do these things because you're at home, hopefully watching this video. But as you come in, um, next class, put your phone up, sit in your assigned seats, turn in any missing work. Don't forget about the late work submission form under reference under the reference folder in Schoology. Um, and open up the Unifocal vocab quiz. We do have the vocab quiz whenever you get to school. So is, as you're watching this video, I'll let that be a reminder to you to study the vocab words. Um, I do have a printout in class of the vocab list, um, but I also have, <laughs> I also, thank you. I also have um, all the words on Quizlet on Schoology. So that's in the reference folder and in um, the quizzes and notebook checks uh, folder of Unit 4. So um, let that be an additional benefit to those of you watching the video. You get a reminder that we have the quiz. So like I said, this lesson is flipped. Um, the lecture should be on Edpuzzle, so you should be getting some questions. And um, we are completing the activity in class. There should be a modeling project on the horizon. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a major grade project or if that's gonna consist of mostly extra credit points, um, but just be on the lookout for that. We'll, we will be modeling a whole lot more parts, uh, maybe some, maybe even some assemblies before the break is, uh, before the semester is over. So today's agenda. Um, we've got the vocab quiz, like I said. Um, if you did not watch this video um, at home, then you will be watching it in class today with headphones and not participating in the worksheet to much to your um, disadvantage. Then we'll be doing the worksheet together in class. We'll be taping it uh, into our notebooks, taking photos of it um, on our phones, or you can use my iPad as a resource, and then submitting those photos to Schoology via Google Docs, just like we did for um, activity 4.2. So the first thing um, that we need to start talking about in physics is vectors. Vectors are just numbers with direction. Just like how we had um, measurements, measurements are numbers with units. You can also call that a quantity. Quantity is a number with a unit. Um, vectors are numbers with a direction, so just a certain kind of number. What are vectors? Um, like I said, they're numbers with direction. That direction can be qualitative, qualitative, just like um, three uh, paces north or uh, three um, meters up or 9.81 meters per second squared towards the center of the earth. 
or um, they can be represented by a sign. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, sometimes it's the second number, like the angle from a horizontal. If you've encountered vectors before, this is, this is probably how you are uh, familiar with them. Um, also in computer science, you put two numbers together as one entity, and you can call that a vector. You can call that a, an array if it has more, more than just two. Um, but a lot of times in a lot of different languages, they call those vectors, two numbers. Um, not, they're not considered one to be the magnitude, one to, to be the direction, um, but they do call that vectors because this concept is very versatile. It, it traverses um, lots of different fields. So like I said, um, you can use it as a, uh, you can understand vectors as um, signs. So pretend that we're talking about our fling machine. So our machine um, ended up, or our machine started rather at this zero point. Um, and then we flung, this is my poor drawing of a, uh, of a little uh, slingshot. So we started our fling machine at the zero and then we flung the cotton balls uh, forwards. Hopefully our cotton balls landed um, on this side. So maybe you got a cotton ball land here. Uh, that would be three feet. Like I said, the units are feet. Three feet forwards or positive three feet. Now if uh, my, my fling machine was dumb and broken and it went backwards, maybe it went two feet backwards. That's a qualitative description of the, of the direction. Or I can just uh, qual quantify it, sorry, quantify it, and make it say negative two feet. So negative two feet, and this is all from this reference point, this reference point of um, my fling machine itself. Uh, so what this is really saying, if you talk about absolute value, the mathematical concept of absolute value, what this is really saying is my cotton ball uh, landed three feet away from my um, from my machine in the positive direction. The positive direction being the direction I intend it to go. So that positive direction is arbitrary. Um, if I instead wanted to call this a negative three, which would be kind of silly because um, that goes against our conventional wisdom. If I wanted to call this negative three and this over here positive two, I could totally do that. It's totally arbitrary. It's a convention, just like many other things in engineering. So um, those are, um, arbitrary directions, but uh, that can be considered a positive direction and a negative direction uh, behind it. You can consider those positive directions and negative directions whichever you want, and uh, you'll see it is not entirely clear at first uh, in the future. So those are vectors. Um, they have a direction. Those are numbers with a direction. I should go back and say uh, this three feet forward or positive three feet, the three, the unit, or the, I'm sorry, the, um, the number there is often called the magnitude. So you've got magnitude and direction. Vectors have a magnitude and direction. Okay, so vectors with magnitude and direction, um, why, why do we ever need that concept? Well, we did do positive three and negative three, um, negative three uh, feet forward. So that feet is uh, called a displacement. Um, in response or uh, in comparison to a distance. So you've got, uh, you've got distance and displacement are two measures of the same thing, but one is a vector and one is a, um, one is a, what we call a scalar. If something doesn't, if a number does not have a direction associated to it, it's called a scalar, S-C-A-L-A-R, because it can scale a uh, vector, which we might see in the future. So a displacement is the vector and, and uh, distance is the scalar. So um, here's a good graphic. Distance is path dependent. Displacement is path independent. So whenever I take this path and I go along and meander my way around, let's pretend this is a 2D surface, a 2D surface and I'm seeing, I'm seeing this from a bird's eye view. I'm meandering around um, on this dashed line, um, the distance it takes is what your odometer says. Or if you have a step counter, um, it's all the steps, um, all the actual distance it takes to go around here. Obviously, this distance path is longer than this displacement. You often say uh, the shortest distance from point A to point B is a straight line. And that's what the displacement is. It's a straight line. It's what your range finder would say. It's the actual, it's the actual difference in position um, that you measure from one point to another point, from your starting point 
to your ending point. Um, so from the beginning to the end, you're comparing points, that's displacement. And also it should say a direction. When you um, track distance, if you were to walk, if you were to walk around that path, uh, whichever direction, doesn't matter. Distance, it just counts um, wherever you're walking in the forward direction. It doesn't matter which direction exactly you're pointing. You're counting steps, right? You're getting steps. Your odometer is ticking. Um, but in displacement, if you were to walk maybe in a full circle, all the way around, all the way around, big circle, and end up in the same spot, um, your displacement would be zero, zero meters. And of course, zero doesn't have a direction. Um, maybe if you took this long meandering path and you went halfway around the circle, <laughs> you went halfway around the circle and ended up um, halfway over, your distance is um, half, the, half the circumference of the circle. And then your displacement is the diameter. And of course, you have to specify uh, from here to here. Maybe that's east. So the diameter of the circle, east. Maybe that's three feet. Three feet east. That's the displacement. Remember, you have to have um, the magnitude, which includes a unit, and the direction. Magnitude and direction for a vector. Okay. Um, so let's pretend you are riding a bike along the sidewalk. Your house is 1.4 miles from your friend's house, and your uh, friend's house is 3.4. I'm sorry, 3.6 miles from um, the cupcake shop. Your friend maybe is sick, and so you want to buy him a cupcake, and then you want to um, return to your friend's house with the cupcake. So you have to ride your bike from your house to your friend's, and then you go past to the cupcake shop, um, and maybe all that takes 30 minutes. So uh, what is that? That's five miles total. You take five miles in 30 minutes, um, then you buy a cupcake, and that takes maybe five minutes. Maybe they're slow. Uh, and then you ride the 3.4 miles back to your friend's house. Maybe that takes 15 minutes. And then you go um, back 20 minutes um, over the 1.4 miles back to your house. Because you uh, are full, your belly's all full of the cupcake, and it takes you a long time to go. It takes you a super long time. Okay, um, so here's a question for you. After all that... What do you think um, this green arrow represents? Let's say you have already gone to the store and you're coming back. What does this green arrow represent? Displacement or distance? Okay. Um, it's a displacement. Yeah, because the distance, uh, sorry, the distance um, would just be all the way to the uh, cupcake store and back. So it would be the five miles Actually, what, what is the distance in this case? Let's say you are uh, one mile from the uh, cupcake shop this way. You're one mile for, from it. So what is the distance? Okay, now let's think. What is the displacement if you're one mile from uh, the cupcake shop? What is the displacement there? Okay, yeah, so uh, the distance would be the five miles plus the one mile back, so six miles total. And it doesn't matter the direction, it's just distance. What is the displacement? Uh, well, you got the 1.4 miles, um, and then going this way and back, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you got there. You could have driven to freaking, oh, sorry, boy. You could have driven to Mars and back, and you're still in the same spot, so your s displacement is still the same. Even though you've traveled a long, long distance, your displacement is the same, just matters how far you are from your original starting point, which in this case would be, let's see, 3.6 minus one, that's 2.6, so four miles, four miles from your house uh, towards the cupcake shop, whatever that is, in the positive direction. Positive four miles is your displacement. So now we're talking about motion graphs, which is plotting motion, as it happens over time. And the over time, the over time is not um, a bad phrase. I love that phrase actually. Linguistically, it just means as time passes. Oh, hush, buddy. I'm about to have to give you up. It means as time passes, but um, mathematically, it has some pretty nice meanings too over time. So, um, motion graphs are all these up here. It's actually a time plot because you're plotting something as time passes. And uh, time is on the x-axis. Um, the most basic one just plots displacement. And remember, the x-axis 
is time not another spatial dimension? Often you'll get these nice graphs. Uh, maybe this one is saying uh, you're just driving away from your house. It's plotting um, the distance away from your house, plotting the displacement from your house. You're just driving in a straight line at a constant velocity as time passes. So constant speed. You're just going, going, going. Um, a lot of people think that this is actually a spatial dimension. And so it looks like you're driving at that, um, that diagonal angle, but um, it doesn't have to be. You could just be driving straight away from your house um, in, any, in any direction in particular, any direction at all. Um, but you have this uh, line here because time always passes. Time passes forward. So um, no matter what, time is going tick, 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 and you're moving forward in that X direction. Um, and this one too. Uh, it looks like you're making this arc path, but maybe not. Maybe you're driving in a straight line. You're just accelerating, going faster. And we'll get to that a little bit more later. But uh, remember, the x-axis is not a spatial dimension. It always moves forward, always moves forward. And you end up with a function, actually. Uh, you end up with a function. So here's um, our, our graph. Uh, we rode 1.4 miles to our friend's house, so we started at that zero, uh, zero time, zero miles away from our house, and we rode up, 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 up to the five mile, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's the five mile mark uh, to hit that cupcake shop. Let's say it took us um, 30 minutes, let's say it took us 30 minutes, so we, we plot this point, 30 minutes and five miles away. And then we can draw that straight line. And then we sat there for five minutes. Um, so from 35, 35 minutes from when we first started and five miles away still. We sat there, we're still five miles away. And then we came back, backwards. So if you wanted to track distance, you could track tick, 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 all this. And of course you wouldn't count this line because you're not moving, you're not traveling distance. And then you can track this tick, 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 tick as well. Um, so the length of this line plus the length of this line, that's distance. But displacement decreases. Displacement shrinks as you go back to your friend's house. Um, so we said that we went back the 3.6 miles. Um, I'm sorry, 3 point, uh, yeah, it should be 3.6 miles. Uh, 3.6 miles and 3.6 miles. Okay, so the 3.6 miles back. Let me just check, make sure. Yeah, 3.6 miles. 3.6 miles back. Uh, to our friend's house, and then, um, and let's say, uh, that took us 15 minutes because we were going fast because we're excited. See how the slope is a little bit steeper. We're going faster, faster, faster. And then you sit at your friend's house and enjoy the cupcake. That's a step that I left off earlier. Uh, that's 20 minutes. So you enjoy the cupcake for 20 minutes, and then you go back at a leisurely pace because your belly's all full um, for the 1.4 miles. So that's what happens here. You go... 20 minutes in the f positive forward time direction, and then uh, 1.4 miles back towards your house. Doesn't matter what direction you go on the x, x axis. In the y direction, up, anywhere up is away from your house, anywhere down is towards your house. That is on the positive um, y axis. If you were to plot below this graph, if you were to go underneath it, anything, um, down, down, down is moving forward or moving further away from your house. Down, down, down. And then going up, back up towards the x-axis is going towards your house. So going back up to zero. Anything going towards zero is going towards your house. Away from zero, whether it's up in the positive, down in the negative, is away from your house. Okay, so let's talk about speed and velocity. Quick note on some symbols. I like this convention a lot. When you've got a um, vector, here you go, mom. Okay, uh, when you've got a vector, I like to put an arrow on top of it, an arrow on top of it. Some people draw just a straight line, so this would be D bar. You could draw that as D bar. Um, and then some people make it bold. I, I think uh, arrow is just fine. It's easy to draw. It's relatively easy to type. Uh, D arrow. And then um, distance and displacement often use the same letter, D. I think it's pretty confusing, um, but we can stick with it because that's the convention that people use. Speed and velocity, though, are always a different, um, always a different letter. And uh, I just stuck with the letters that we uh, have in the English words. Speed can be S, velocity can be V, but I really like to have a tail um, with my V. This is actually the Greek letter nu. 
Um, but it, when you when you draw it, and I'll show you that in a second, when you draw it, um, I always like to have a little tick mark um, after, I'm sorry, right before, right here, a little tail right before my V for velocity. Um, so uh, those are the symbols. Now, when you talk about speed, speed is the scalar, speed is the scalar, and velocity is the vector, which means velocity has a direction. You can say uh, three meters per second forwards, or three miles an hour west, or um, 10 kilometers per hour um, up if you're, if you're uh, accelerating in a rocket, or if you're moving in a rocket. Um, so but average speed, like I said, you can just go back uh, to this and calculate over the entire thing. You can, you can count up the distance, which is this, the length of this line plus the length of this line. And you said uh, that took 30, um, let's see, 30, no, 50 uh, minutes. That's like 50 minutes. So it took, I went five miles. I'm uh, sorry, that's not the length of the line. That's the displacement over that line. I went five miles plus another 3.6 miles. So 8.6 miles um, over the 50 minutes. So 8.6 miles over the 50 minutes. And that would be your average speed over that time. And you count the 50 minutes because you were sitting down. That that uh, zero speed there when you're buying the, cu the cupcake um, it takes your average speed down a little bit. Yeah, so you have to include that in your um, time. Now, that's average speed. That's average speed. You don't care about the distance, or you don't care about the um, direction. You just care about um, distance and not a direction. Um, you don't care about displacement. But average velocity, average velocity um, can be taken between two points on a motion graph. You just take the points and you calculate the slope between them, just like you do in Algebra 1. Hopefully everyone um, in this class has already taken Algebra 1, or at least is, is in Algebra 1 now, and are, has already uh, become very familiar with calculating slope. But this is um, average velocity. It's, uh, it, d direction counts, so you can have a positive velocity or a negative velocity, depending on uh, where your two points are located. And it always depends on um, your starting point and your ending point. So uh, all these symbols here, the symbol, the symbology, um, I like a whole lot. This delta, this this triangle thing is a delta. It means change. If you've ever seen or heard the band Alt J, Alt J is a hotkey on the Mac um, for this symbol here, this delta symbol, and it stands for change, which is a common concept in uh, alternative music, I guess, or that's that style of music. Um, so it means change. So, um, and, and, and also you can use this formula um, to remember that this is the slope of uh, the distance curve, the slope of the curve, um, or rise over run, the slope of that, uh, slope of the motion graph plotting distance or displacement, really. Um, and it's rise over run. So you can take uh, this average velocity by taking the final distance or displacement minus the initial. Uh, displacement. This is actually displacement. I'll change it here. Displacement. Uh, yeah, the final displacement minus the initial. Change is always final minus initial. Final minus initial. Change is final minus initial. Um, and then divide it by the final time minus the initial time. So let's do a couple of examples here. Um, going from the home, from your home to the cupcake shop. What? <clears throat> what is your average velocity? Okay. Yeah. Pretty simple. Uh, rise over run, so rise is uh, 5 miles, the run is 30 minutes, um, so 5 miles over 30 minutes, you're on average going 10 miles an hour, which is the same as average speed in this case, same as average speed because we haven't gone backwards. If we go backwards, um, our speed um, will keep ticking up, you'll keep uh, accumulating miles on your average speed, but your velocity might uh, decrease. As you go back, 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 between here and here, for instance, um, between the beginning and the end, uh, you would just calculate the distance here, and there's no rise at all. There's no rise at all between here and here, and so you're not accumulating any um, displacement. You haven't accumulated any displacement over the entire path, and so your average velocity ends up being zero. And that makes sense because you had some velocity going away and some velocity coming back. And so this positive velocity 
averaged up with this negative velocity averages out to be zero. You get a zero slope between these two points. Okay, let's do this again. Between um, leaving the cupcake shop and arriving at your friends, what is the average velocity? Pretty simple, it's just slope. Um, so you take this negative 3.6 miles over 15 minutes. Uh, you can convert the minutes to hours like this and you end up with negative 14.4. Okay, let's do one more. This is as you're sitting at your friend's house. As you're sitting at your friend's house between here and here. Okay, and you should be familiar with, um, with algebra enough by now to know that the rise is nothing, so you're not um, accumulating any displacement. You're not traveling any. Here you go zero miles over the course of 30 minutes, uh, which is any time if you're sitting your average velocity is zero miles an hour, which is the same for your average speed. Okay, so we'll talk about acceleration in the future. Um, just know that in this case, um, our slopes change only at these points, here, here, and here, which is impossible in real life. You're not gonna be able to be starting at a stop, uh, a standstill, and then automatically be going to a uh, constant velocity of 10 miles an hour. Uh, you have to accelerate up to that so that you should see a slight curve, a little curve, a little curve over here too as you slow down and stop, and then a little curve here as you start from stops as well. A curve on all of these points. You should, uh, you should have a curve in your life, but in this case, it's a little simplified. Um, but if you were to plot the velocity, you could plot this as positive 10, and this as what was it, negative 14. Uh, and this as zero, this as zero, and this as negative, uh, whatever that is. Let's see, it's uh, one and a half, negative one and a half miles for the displacement over 20 minutes, um, which I think I calculated it out to be, let's see, one and a half over 20 times 60 to convert it to, um, to hours. So four and a half, four and a half, um, negative four and a half miles an hour. Uh, so that's a lot slower than the others, but if you were to plot that, you would get something like this. Okay, so if you were to plot the velocity, you start off at that 10 miles an hour. You start off at the 10 miles an hour um, at zero, a time t equals zero. Um, and then how long do you stay like that? How long do you stay like that? Uh, yeah, it's the whole duration for 30 minutes. Uh, so the velocity is just a straight line across because it's a constant velocity. It's not changing. It's constant right at the 10 miles an hour mark. Uh, and then whenever uh, you are stopped at the shop, it's easy. Velocity is zero. Velocity is zero uh, throughout that entire stop. So from 30 to 35 minutes, you're sitting flat line on the zero. Uh, then from 35 to 50, you're going uh, back towards your friend's house. So where do you think that is? Okay, it's, uh, yeah, down here, negative. This actually should be down further, maybe down here. Negative 14.4, whatever that was, um, way down here between 35 and 50. So that 15 minutes, uh, it's negative because you're going backwards in the negative direction back towards your house uh, to get to your friend's house. And then between 50 and 70, easy, you're stopped, zero velocity. And then between 70 and 90, you're going back from your friend's house to your house. So where do you think uh, this velocity would be? Um, above in the positive direction or below in the negative direction? Yeah, it's still negative because you're going back towards your house. Now, tell me, do you think it's going to be um, above this marker here, above that, or below it? Because remember, you were going slower. Do you think slower means above or below? Yeah, if you're going slower, uh, you're going back towards, or you're going closer, your velocity, excuse me, is closer to zero uh, than this velocity over here. So your graph needs to indicate uh, that your velocity and this duration of time is closer to zero uh, than it was here. Uh, so don't get confused. We're above, this line is above this other line, um, which you might think means faster, but it doesn't. If you're closer to the zero, if, you're close, if your value of velocity is closer to zero, that means slower. In other words, your magnitude or your speed, the magnitude of velocity or the speed gets closer to zero, or the absolute value of velocity gets closer um, to zero, closer to, 
um, no velocity at all, and so you're a little bit slower. Even though your velocity is um, higher, it's more positive than it was over here. So um, if you wanted to, you could put in um, these dashed lines here. That just means uh, you know, you're know you going instantly, you're instantly changing speed, which like we said before is impossible. Um, but for the sake of this demonstration, um, we are instantly changing speed again and again. Um, and if you wanted to change the, if you wanted to plot the change in speed or the change in change in distance, you could, and that's acceleration, which we'll get into next time. But we just plotted the change in uh, displacement. All of this velocity is the change in displacement. Um, which, if you're, if you've ever heard of calculus, that's what this is. We plotted a change in function, which is also called a derivative. We plot this velocity curve is the is the derivative of the displacement curve that we had before. Um, so you guys just did calculus. You're f for the first time, you've done calculus, maybe for the first time, but you've definitely done calculus. And we've just started physics. So hopefully we'll get into both of those concepts uh, in more detail in the future. Um, but that's all for now. Let's call it a wrap and have a good night.